You've heard about Apple's M2 powered Mac mini and it seems to you like it's the perfect balance between power and price. Just like you, I wondered if it might be the perfect desktop Mac. On paper, it seems like a much better value than my own MacBook Studio that I use to produce these videos. In this video, I'll go over the performance of the Mac mini, what you might gain or lose versus the Mac Studio by using it, and tell you if you should buy this Mac or if you should wait for something that's coming later in the year. I've got the new M2 Pro Mac Mini in my hands for videos on this channel and for an article in petapixel.com, and I've been putting it through a battery of tests to see how it stacks up. So let's give it a try. Apple already has a desktop machine aimed at the creator, which is the Mac Studio. I've been using the Mac Studio for about a year, and it's the most capable Mac that I've ever used. For my upcoming review in Petapixel, I've been doing benchmark testing, but I've also got a lot of thoughts on this Mac Mini based on the specs, the price, and who I think it's aimed at. I'll have a full review of the Mac Mini after I've had more time to play with it, but right now I want to give you some of my thoughts about who it's for and whether or not you should buy it based on the testing that I've done so far in performance and operation. So the way Apple does its processor names is a bit weird. So just the processor name, M1, M2, that's the lowest performance chip in a class. It has just the name of the processor. And then Apple uses different endings as the processors get more powerful. So there's an M1 chip and then M1 Pro and then the M1 Max and then the M1 Ultra. Personally, I find this a little bit weird since Max is short for maximum and I guess Ultra is more maximum than maximum. I don't know. Right now, the M2 lineup has the M2, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. There is no M2 Ultra yet. Okay, back to the Mac Mini. I'm not gonna go through all the specs on this machine. They're all available on Apple sites and the benchmarking is more important to me than the specs anyhow. There are some key things here to take a look at though. The top end Mac Studio is a lot more powerful than the top end M2 Mac Mini, but the entry level Mac Studio is less powerful than the top end M2 Mac Mini and the Studio is more expensive as well. There are some hardware differences between the two. The Mac Mini can get up to 32 gigabytes of RAM versus the top 128 gigabytes on the Mac Studio. That most powerful Mac Studio though costs $5,000 and can go higher if you get an upgrade to RAM and storage. Fully maxed out on Apple's site, it's about $8,000 and the Mac Mini is $4,500. That said, the maximum configuration of the Studio does offer more upgrades than the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini has also some internal upgrades over the Mac Studio like HDMI 2.1, which gives better 8K performance, faster Wi-Fi 6E versus 6 on the Studio and Bluetooth 5.3 up from Bluetooth 5. Connectivity wise though, the Mac Mini only has four Thunderbolt 4 ports, while the Mac Studio has four Thunderbolt 4 plus two USB-C on the front or on the top end Mac Studio, all six ports are Thunderbolt 4. There's no card reader built into the Mac Mini, though I think that with the money you're gonna save over some of the Mac Studio configurations, you could buy a card reader or a dozen. So I want you to text me. My phone number is in the description below and it's from Mint Mobile. Go to mintmobile.com forward slash Dave tries this to check them out. But first, I want you to text me your gear questions and I'll answer them. Maybe you'll make them into some videos. Tell me about what videos you'd like to see. Maybe tell me what camera gear you use or even let me know that you're a fan of the channel. In fact, text me if you have questions about Mint Mobile too. Mint Mobile offered me a free trial to see if I liked their service. I told them I was most interested in checking out the data speeds as I work remotely a lot and I use my phone as a hotspot. Mint Mobile invited me to put the 5G connection to the test as they know that data is the key to creators like you and me. Okay, so I set up an account with Mint Mobile, I fired up speed test and oh my God, the 5G transfer speeds are so much faster than my Verizon account. I'm talking up to 10 times faster regularly everywhere I go. In my very first test sitting at my desk, Verizon had a 30 megabit per second average download and eight megabit per second upload. Mint Mobile averaged 250 megabit per second download and 45 up. The fastest I have seen is 600 megabit per second, 600 megabit per second. I've tested the speeds everywhere I've gone for the last month and Mint Mobile has blown away Verizon every single Time. Best of all, coverage starts at just $15 a month for both individual and family plans. Unlimited data plans are just $30 a month, and Mint Mobile even has representatives that will handle transferring your lines from your current carrier, including that lousy part of calling the carrier to help make the switch. And switching will save you money, too. Where was I? Where I think it's more important to look is at comparable setups at the base end, because that's where I think most Mac Mini customers are shopping, and that's where I think the biggest difference lies. There's a $600 configuration of the Mac Mini, which is definitely not as fast as any configuration of the Mac Studio, but it would be absolutely perfect for beginner photographers, most videographers, someone who's not going to do 8K video, but mostly HD and some 4K. I'd get more RAM in that machine, 24 gigabytes adds $400, and 512 meg of storage adds $200 more. That brings you to $1199 for that base model with some of the important upgrades. But the really interesting machine to me is the M2 Pro Mac Mini. That's the one that I've been testing, and the starting price is $1300, but it already has that 512 gigabyte drive. 
You can upgrade the processor in that machine though, and that adds $300, and I'm not really sure that's necessary for the average creative user. What I would recommend to upgrade to is the 32 gigabytes of RAM, and that brings that system to $1,700. The base M1 Mac Studio is $2,000. Even with the RAM upgrade on the Mac Mini to match the Mac Studio, you're getting a machine that's more powerful than the M1 Max Mac Studio for $300 less. It's also more powerful than the more expensive configuration I use for testing, which is about $2,500. You save $800 and you get a machine that's about 20% faster than the more expensive system, that is a good deal. In my test for my upcoming Petapixel review and for the review on this channel, I've run the Mac through a lot of benchmark and real world testing. We use some manual import and export testing as well as automated tools like Geekbench and Puget. Puget makes a variety of benchmark tools that run on popular software programs. They do an automated test of real world editing in photo and video. The short story here is that the M2 Max Mac Mini is about 20% faster in almost all tasks than my own M1 Max Mac Studio. So who should buy this and what's coming next? If you're looking for the fastest desktop Mac, the fully loaded M1 Ultra Mac Studio is still the fastest machine until Apple's Mac Pro drops. I suspect that'll have something like an M3 chip or 12 M2 chips, I'm not sure, but it's still going to be prohibitively expensive for most customers. The Mac Studio will need to update to have an M2 processor at some point relatively soon, or the entry-level model doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't think that's going to happen until after a Mac Pro comes along, and maybe even longer. Since there's already a high-end configuration of the Mac Studio, customers that want more power can buy that high-end model. Creators on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and other platforms are increasing in numbers daily. The pressure to create high-quality content is increasing too, but it doesn't get any cheaper to get a channel started. For photographers, time spent waiting around for your images to load or waiting for images to export is billable time wasted. Even marginal improvements in workflow can result in huge time savings when you're editing thousands of images from a shoot. At the same time, photographers don't need as high end of a machine as most video editors do. The new Mac Mini is perfect for both of these customer types, and if that's you, you should order one. I'd recommend getting the upgrade to the 32 gigabytes of RAM as that's the most overlooked part of most computer purchases. Doesn't matter how fast your computer is, if you run out of RAM, you're going to slow down. So in summary, the M2 Pro Mac Mini is a hell of a deal, and it's a better choice for many creators than the Mac Studio. It's faster than some Mac Studio models, it's cheaper than all of the Mac Studio models, and it has enough connectivity to satisfy most setups. So what do you think about the new Mac Mini? Let me know in the comments below. Are you tempted to get one? If you're thinking about upgrading, what are you upgrading from? Is there a better choice for you? And if so, what is it? And again, if you like this content, please remember to like and subscribe below. Over here, you'll be able to find a playlist of some of my other video reviews. And over here, you can subscribe. And down here, you can buy some merchandise. For Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. Thanks so much for giving this a try.